Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Tower of the Sorcerer with your delightful host, Malefact. I've been feeling a little bit under the weather lately, but uh, thankfully I have a nice big cup of coffee next to me and I plan on progressing this time round. We have the Orb of the Hero, which always instills me with wonder, and a penchant for uh, slaying the undead, so I think we're all set. Let's get going. Oh! Hello, hello, hello! Hey, we meet again! How greatly you beat the boss of this area! I hope that's not a euphemism. It troubled me that I couldn't go upstairs anymore. <laughs> My god, sounds like a pensioner. Get a stair lift! I heard that there is a shield on the 11th floor and a sword on the 17th! I would get them if I were you. Please excuse my going first. Haha! <laughs> Not suspicious in the slightest. Okay, as you can see, this is the next area, so we have a whole slew of new enemies, including bigger bats, bigger slimes, and even redder priests. Um, also, zombies with flesh. Fleshy flesh. Probably the most politically incorrect looking zombies I've seen, but there we go. <sighs> I'm a bit disappointed in the, uh, the priests, though. I mean, the priests in this area are called Superion Priests. We can't even hit them. But I was kind of hoping that this round we get maybe bishops, and then, you know, it progresses, like, up the church hierarchy, so archbishop. Then by the fifth floor, we're fighting the frickin' pope. I guess my dreams of fighting the Pope in an RPG are still going to be unfulfilled. Okay, as you can see, here's the nice flashing neon uber altar they've got decked out here. Let's, uh, let's go check it out. If you offer me 20 gold, I will grant your request. Will you? Why, certainly. Okay, life recovery, defensive power up by 8, offensive by 4. Okay, pay close attention, because this is the only time in the game we're going to raise our offensive power by 8 in total. This will allow us to hit things, um, and then we're going to raise our defensive power. The reason we don't raise our defensive power more than we do... Um, sorry, <laughs> brain melt offensive power more than we do is because, as you can see, we get 8 uh, defense for the price of the same that we get the for offense. Which, you know, my brain no works so good at the maths, but that's, that's a, you know, you need to raise the defense once more. We can kill skeletons now, which is good. We, they're not even hurting us. Got a request from uh, Tommy Demas about, I'm sorry if that's not how you pronounce your name, which is a good one, which is about speeding up the speed of these really slow beep, 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 beep battles. And I'll be looking into that next time round. Um, the problem is I have music on in the background is that either I have to put the music on over afterwards or record my speech on afterwards, otherwise it's going to go when I'm fighting things, which might actually work for when I'm um, going to going through a really boring section. So I'll definitely look into that in future. Thank you, it's a really good idea. Whew. We have a date with a crystal. Uh, and not the cool crystal from Blade Runner, unfortunately. Do, 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 do. Wait a second. We have a date with this merchant, first and foremost. The wickedly awesome music you hear on the background uh, comes from Invasion, which I was talking about last time, uh, by Deskiga. Uh, definitely worth checking out. Um, fantastic music as well. But I think a um, guy who goes by the name of Andernuts, which is a reference to the Earthbound series. Okay, I will sell you a blue key at a very special price. Will you buy it? Yes, yes I will, because that is a ridiculously good value. I think an old man referred to speaking to uh, merchants and folk after we'd already bought stuff from them, so let's give that a try. Here is a magic tower of 50 stories. Half as good as Arabian Nights, but I'm not complaining. Every 10 stories form one area. The boss who controls each area are posted in this tower. And if you don't beat them, you cannot ascend from there. So we knew most of that already, uh, which is why I tend not to speak to merchants. But I think the next dude we're going to speak to is probably more enlightening. Okay, back to that date I was talking about. Skeleton B still causes us about 14 damage, but to be honest, we can take 14 damage in order to get plus one defense. And, even more important than plus one defense, shiny shiny wand! We found the Orb of Wisdom! Hooray! We're just one orb short of the Tri-Orb, which will 
no doubt grant our deepest, darkest wishes. I can kill you. And the reason why I'm killing other monsters now that don't cause me any damage is because these drop gold. And gold, as we've seen, is used to buy awesome upgrades, even though we won't be using the altar in this floor um, again. That's because I think the altars in this game are kind of a metaphor for drugs. You know, you start off with one altar and after you've used it a couple times, you just need to move on to a harder, more dangerous altar in order to get your kicks. I will sell five keys for 50 gold! Will you buy them? Yes, yes I will, you awesome merchant dude. Um, as you can see, the Orb of Wisdom works like a so. It has 24 slots in it, all for storing the wonderful gems of information that older people might give us. It's empty now, but if we talk to this merchant... When you offer gold at an altar, you may as well have your defensive power risen rather than your offensive power. The enemy, whom you cannot beat, may appear, provided you won't raise your offensive power. So basically, he explained what I just explained to you, which is... It's pointless raising your offensive power when you can get twice as much defensive power. Which is good advice. As you'll see, that little gem uh, has just appeared on our Orb of Wisdom. Now we can win any argument without fear of retribution. Also, we can go undercover and, you know, kind of do political exposés. Aha! We prove the tax fraud is fraudulent with the Orb of Wisdom! Right, enough blabbering on. Oh, I want that sword, but opening this key... This opening this key? <laughs> opening a key is impossible, but opening this door will be pointless because that room is full of lava, as you can plainly see, and it will probably kill us. And nothing ruins a party like lava. That is a sacred sword, by the way, the best sword in the entire game. So it's understandable we're not going to get it till the end. Okay, big slimes in here, big rocky dude, and armor zombies. The only guys we can feasibly take on are these big slimes, and I'm sorry Tomodemus is taking so long. This is boring for me too. Okay, you notice we just opened a door for no apparent reason? Well, it's probably guarding a secret passage, right? Right, yes it is. Your yeah. senses and mine? Bang on the money. Holy crud! It's a freaking octopus! Never trust a cephalopod. Oh no, crap! Oh crud! <laughs> Yeah, I shouldn't have walked in there. Now I'm stuck facing the octopus. Okay, uh, pause. Pause while I, uh... While I... I <laughs> sort things out. <laughs> we'll just, uh, <laughs> retcon that out of existence. Okay, this is why you can never trust a cephalopod. Seriously, they'll close doors and all manner of freaky deaky on you. 8,844 damage. We're not gonna survive even an eighth of a hit. And seeing as he has eight legs, I kind of figure that that's like not even a 64th of a hit there. But on the plus side, we will be literally making calamari out of that thing later. Uh, merchant dude wants to sell us a blue key for 200 gold. Not right now. Not that it's not a good deal, but I don't have the money. And we're gonna need all our money for something else. Hello! Look who it is in the top right hand corner! It's our favourite gentleman thief! Yes everybody, it's Yahtzee! <laughs> ah! Are you alright? The big octopus which lives in here was blocking my progress! Now a loophole has been completed at last! <laughs> a loophole. That's what he calls the walls he makes indoors. I guess he worked in law before. You had better put off beating him! <laughs> okay, I hope that's not a euphemism again. See ya later! What? Your American accent is fooling no one, Yahtzee. Okay, this is one of those times we're going to need to use the blue door, because the other way involves zombie rape. And unless I have very sick taste, it's not, it's not what we want to do. <laughs> Old dude. I heard that you could find a red key at least two places in this area. That is actually very good advice. There are, uh, usually there's only one red key in each area, well at least in most of the normal areas in inverted commas slash wacky, wacky quotes. Um, but this one has two ways of getting the red key. We're going to be taking the lamer way, um, which involves large amounts of cash. <laughs> the other way involves zombies and I'm not too keen on that. Um, yep, secret passage here. <laughs> Look at this rock guy. We can't even hit him. His defense is so high. Uh, now I know we're running out of time. Briefly, look. The gatekeepers now do zero damage. Elza mighty have fallen. 
Before they used to do a squillion damage, and now nothing. I laugh in your general direction. <laughs> general direction. One of my favorite generals. One more to go. And swig it! Yes! We win! Okay, this has been Let's Play Tower of the Sorcerer with Malefact. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Next time around, some more funky stuff. We'll see about getting that shield. And finally, finally we'll complete our Tri Orb of Awesomeness. So, all this to play for and more next time. See you around.